So today's daf Yomi is getting daf no and getting fifty. Today's daf Yomi we have a teaching that Mar Zutra, the son of Rav Nachman. We, we a few days ago we had the story about the daughters of Rav Nachman who used to stir the hot pot with their hands. Now we have a story about Mar Zutra, the, the son of Rav Nachman, and he taught something Mishmed Rav Nachman, and he taught the following in the name of Rav Nachman Shtar Chov. Let's say you have a note, a creditor has a note on orphans, on an estate. Even though the note says on it that the lender stipulated with the borrower specifically that he can collect from the edis, from the best property, what we'll call class A, even though he stipulated that, Nevertheless, Boris. Nevertheless, we have a separate rule that from orphans you can only collect from Ziboris. Ziboris is the worst property, so that's class C property. So even though there's a note specifying that you can always collect the money from class A property, in this case, because the person he lent the money to died <coughs> and he's collecting it from the estate, you can only collect it from the class C which is the rule that you can only collect from the estate from the Ziboris properties. And it comes along Abaye when he hears his teaching in the name of Rav Nachman. He says, Teda, I'll prove to you that it's correct. The Baal Chob Dine Bebenonis, because the creditor, generally speaking, the law is he collects from Benonis. We learned this in our mission of the creditor, generally speaking, collects from class B property. Umiyasmi, but nevertheless, when it comes to collect from the orphans, he collects from the Ziboris. So that's the case. Good morning, good morning. Welcome back. Oh, welcome back. And there's the Gemara's right there on that shelf. Hold on, keep going, keep going. Should be right there. Maybe take a few. All right, yeah, Shikoh. We, uh, look, the wind just blew in our, our dear friend, Harusa Harold from his travels. We'll catch up afterwards. So we're on top of Nuna Madawa 50A. And we're around 10 lines from the top. Start again for Harold so that, um, no, no, so you can catch up. We just did two lines. But the 50A, around 10 lines from the top. And Marzutra said in the name of Ramnach, and we have a principle that typically speaking, when it comes to an estate, which the Gemara calls orphans, when you collect from an estate, you collect from the Ziboris, from the, there's three classes of property, class A, class B, and class C. So typically speaking, you collect from the class C property from the estate. So Marzutra, the son of Ramnachman says, let's say you have a star hove, a note, Hayotze al Yisomim, and you had originally went to a borrower, but the borrower died, and so now the note is on the Yisomim. Even though the note stipulated, I'm lending you this million dollars, and as a right, I have the right to collect my debt from your class A property. Nevertheless, since he died and now there's an estate involved, Enu Gove Elman is Boris. You can only collect from the class C property, from the worst property. And Abai says, I'll prove to you that that's correct. But Abai says, I'll prove to you because the creditor, the love of a creditor is in general, generally speaking, the creditor collects from the class B property. Um, and Mias may be Ziboris, that generally speaking, a creditor collects from class B property. Nevertheless, even though he has a right to collect from class B, when he's coming to collect from an estate, he gets bumped down, he can only collect from class C. So we see that people, the lenders lose their rights when it comes to the estate and they get pushed down to the Ziboris property. So Rava says to Abai, the two cases are not the same. You wanna bring me a proof from a creditor to a case where the person stipulated in the contract, they're not the same situation. Harmoly Rava, so Rava says to Abaye, Hoki Hasha, the two cases are not the same. Balchov, Dine, Midioraisa, a creditor, his law is biblical, meaning to say, biblically speaking, the creditor is only allowed to collect from the Ziboris. Biblically speaking, a creditor can only collect from the class C property. And how do we know that? Like Ula taught us, the Ula Dvar Torah, Balcho Ziboris. Biblically speaking, a creditor has a right to collect from the class C property. And this is based upon the verse that it says that if you come to your borrower and you want to get a collateral, it says, Bachutz Tamud, the Ish, 
that you, the lender stands outside and the borrower brings out his pawn. And madhar shall ish, what does a person typically take out? Well, he takes out his worst. So we see that in this case, the borrower, the lender has the right from the borrower to borrow the class C property. So why did the why does the Mishnah say that a creditor gets from class B property? It's only today It's only because we don't want to shut the door before borrowers, meaning to say we tell the borrowers pay from class B property or else nobody's going to ever lend you money in the first place. And so therefore the really a creditor is supposed to collect from class C property. But we tell the but we say creditors could collect from class B because we want to incentivize loans. But when it comes to an estate, the rabbis pushed it back to the biblical law and say that you collect it from the class C property because that's the real technical law. Also, you don't have the problem about not incentivizing loans because people don't lend the money, as we'll see later on in our Gemara. People don't lend the money with the assumption that the person they're lending to is going to die. It's not part of their calculations. And so therefore... In that case, the rabbis push it back to the biblical law and you collect from the class C. So that's the biblical law. The real law is that when you when you lend money to a credit, to a borrower, you collect money from his class C. But in this case, but here there's a specific contract that stipulates that you collect from the class A property. Here, that's what the contract states. It's a biblical law. You, you follow the contract and the contract states you get to collect from the best property. I feel Yasmi Nami be this. So Rabbi says, even from the even from the estate, you should be able to, if it's stipulated, you should be able to collect from the class A property. Kamara says, well, Rava, but according to Rava's logic, Vatani Avram Khuzai, or the Marat Sai says you can't call him Avram because you're not allowed to call anybody by the name of Avram after God changed his name to Avram. So he says, Avimi Khuza. He says, Boris. But we, according to Rava, what's he going to do with the principle that was taught by Avram Chuzah or Avim Chuzah that you can only collect from an estate from Ziboris, even if it's from the Zakin, even if it's from you were damaged, a tort. So damages, we know, but biblically speaking, you collect from the best of the property. He pays from the best of his field. And nevertheless, nevertheless, the uh, estate is you collect from the best of the property, the class A property, but nevertheless, when it comes to and orphans, you're going to collect according to Avimi Chuzai from the class C property. But damages is a biblical law that you collect from the Edis. And so we see how does Rabbi explain that even by a biblical law, you, you bump down the estate, the orphans, and you collect only from the class C. Gemara says, no, this is not a typical, this is not the typical case. What we're talking about here is the understanding that Rabbi, that Rabbi Shmuel gave to how, what the biblical law is about the collection of, collection of damages. Here we're talking about a case, Gagon Shaisa, Edis, Denizak, Kizi, Boris, Demazik, Rabbi Shmuel. We're talking about a case where the damaged party was his best property, his class A property was the equivalent of the class C property of the, of the damager. And this follows the position of Rabbi Shmo, who says, Midiaraisa, that biblically speaking, Bidinizak Shamin. And biblically speaking, when you come when you come to collect from damages, we take it from that there's a law that e that we take, we measure what's the class A property of the damaged person. And the person, the damager can pay even from his class C property. But but because we wanna we wanna disincentivize the we wanna incentivize the damager to watch his ox from goring, we say he has to pay from the best of his property. But in this case, we put the law in its biblical law and say he can even pay from his class C property. That's how the Gemara answers this question. And on account of making the you know making the world safer, takinu rabbana but the mazik rabbis instituted that the, that the you pay from the ma, the mazik the damager pays from the best of his property. But in the case of an orphan, so the rabbis established that the orphan pays can even pay from his ziboris if it matches the the edis of the nizek. And Mar says, "Is this really the case? Any is this really the case?" that Rabbi is saying that if it's a biblical law, the estate pays not from the Ziboris, but from the Edis. Is this really the case? 
Vahatani Rebbe Lazar Nitva, Ain Nifra Min Nirsa Yisum and Elanet Menazi Boris. We have another statement, another price, Rebbe Lazar Nitva taught that you collect from the estate only from the Ziboris, and then the price concludes with this, with this uh, opaque clause, even if they are the best. What does that mean? You collect from the orphans, from the Ziboris, even if they're the best. Maya What does it mean, even if they're the best? Doesn't it mean like Marizutra taught in the name of Rav Nachman, Rav Afogav, the cost of Idis Bishtara? Doesn't it mean even if you wrote that this loan will be collected from the class A property. When it comes to the estate, you collect it only from the orphans, you collect it only from the class C. And isn't that a refutation of Rava? Mar says, no, that's not what it means. Well, my edis, it means shafai edis, shafai edis, where the edis has disappeared. So what's the case here? That the person has the best of the best. He has an even better one than the best. And that property, which he was expecting to collect from, somehow or other got destroyed. There was a flood, it destroyed the field after, after the, the loan. And now he, when he comes to collect the loan, the edis is no longer there. So, so this, and this is like, this is consistent with the teaching of Rava. The Amar Rava has Boris. let's say, uh, so let's say what happened was that he damaged Ziboris, meaning to say he damaged your class C property. Does, nevertheless, go the Minoidis. You get to collect, the person who was damaged gets to collect from the class A property. But Shafai Edis, but let's say the Edis was destroyed. And so now once the Edis is destroyed, go the Minoidis. Then we have a right that you might have thought that the whole case is ruined and now you get to collect from you lost your right, and now you start over, and you can only collect from the Ziboris. We say, no, the rabbi's instituting that in that case, you still could collect from the Bainonis, from the average property, the Gabi Yasme, but in that case, it blew Rabbana de Araisa. In that case, the rabbi said, no, you go back to the biblical law for the orphans, and there, since the Edis was destroyed, you can collect from the orphans in that case where the Edis was destroyed only from the Ziboris and the Class C property. So we don't have a refutation of Rava, and Rava does not accept of Nachman's rule. Kamara now says another case, from the estate, you can only collect from the class C property. So by Rava Chadvoi Barami, this, when we say that if you're collecting money from the Yisomim, from the orphans, you can only collect it from the class C property, Yisomim Sha'amru, he asked the question, these orphans, are they Kitanoa field the dawn? Are they minors or even adults? What are we talking about here? Are they minors or even adults? When we say you can only collect from the orphans, is that because they're, they're minors and therefore we go easy on them? Or is it even because of their adults? And that's just a general rule of a state. Do we say, Takanti David Rabbanan Gabi Yisomen Lekatanim? Takanti David Rabbanan. Do we say that the rabbis made a takana for the orphans? And meaning to say, the, the rabbis were worried about the orphans and the rabbi said it'd be so hard for them to come and sell the class C property because nobody wants to work for, on it. And so therefore the rabbis helped them out by saying that, that you have to seize, that you get to collect their class C property to protect them from having to try to sell it. Odilma, we other rabbanam, so Takanta, do we say, and therefore the rabbis made a takana for the minors, but not for the adults. Or maybe the whole reason why you collect from the Ziboras, from the class C for the orphans, is not because it's a takana, because the, the, it's because the lender didn't anticipate that the borrower is going to die. And he didn't anticipate that the borrower was going to die and the money was going to end up in the estate. Meaning to say the whole reason why in general you collect from a note from the borrower, from the bainanist is because we want to encourage loans. But in this case, we, we, we never anticipated we'd be in this situation. So there's no takana. So therefore, the, the reform that you say that you could collect from the best or the average doesn't apply in this case because it's an unusual situation. So therefore, even from an adult orphan, you collect only from the class C property. Marcel, let's try and bring a proof. Tashma, the Tani Abayi Kashishi, Abayi Kashishi taught that Yisomen Sha'avru, 
Gedolim. When it's when it says Yisomin, these are even adults. The Insar Chomer Ketanim, even for sure minor orphans, but even adult orphans. So this was a statement that Abaye Kashishi taught. Abaye Kashisha taught. So the Gemara says, but maybe he only said that statement in another context. Tani Milulinian Shvua. Maybe he said that statement with respect to somebody who takes an oath that that with somebody. Uh, who wants to collect money, he has a note on an estate. And if he wants to collect money, he has to collect money, but he has to take an oath because maybe the person who borrowed the money who died, maybe he paid the money back. So therefore maybe he says that with respect to an oath because nobody knows what their father did. Even if he's an adult, the God of Amelie Davua could cut and damage. Uh, even an adult, when it, as it relates to what his father did, he's like a minor. He doesn't know exactly all his father's dealings. Of Olayin Ziburis law, but with respect to collecting from the Ziburis, the class C property, maybe there's a distinction. And the Gemara says, actually, no, there's no distinction. Behilkasa, Allah is on the top of the on the base, he's so much Amro. When the, it says that the, the Mishnah that you collect from the Asoman from the class C property from the Ziburis, Gedolim that refers to adults, the Ainsar Homer Katanam, even if the orphans are minors, for sure, if they're adults. Whether it comes to requiring the other person to take an oath, or whether it comes to collecting from the class C property. So from the estate, you only get you, it doesn't matter when we're dealing with an estate here, it doesn't matter if they're adults or minors. We're going to deal on tomorrow's DAF with the executor of the estate. But for now, we, we go on to the next case. And that says, So in the Chasim Meshubadim, these are property that there had been a lien on it. And the person sold the property subsequent to the note he borrowed from you. And so you have a right, if he can't pay back his money, to go and seize that property. But if he has free and clear property, even though that free and clear property is worse off, is let's say class C property, and the, and the property he sold was class A, you can't go and seize the class A property from the purchaser. You have to collect your, your note from the class C property in those circumstances. So by Rabbi Chadvoi Barami, so Rabbi Chadvoi Barami taught, well, okay, that's the case by, that's a situation by a case of where he sold the, the class A property subsequent to your own, but let, that, that you don't have the right to seize it. But Matana Hayek, but let's say he didn't sell it. Let's say the person you lent the money to didn't sell the property after the loan, but he gave it away as a gift. Do we say, what's the reason why you can't go and seize the property that you had a lien on? Do we say that the rabbis made this reform because they're worried about, they wanted to protect the purchaser of that property. And they wanted him to say, listen, listen, he, he left you behind property. He just didn't leave you the choice of property. So he, he protect him so that he doesn't lose the, his purchase. Of a matana, but that's it. You gave it away as a gift. The borrower gave it away as a gift. The lake up say the delukuchos. There's no loss to the purchaser. Therefore, you can even go and seize it from the person who gave the property to as a gift. Oh, Delmo, or perhaps matana nami, or else maybe the same law applies to a gift as to a purchase because everybody knows there's no such thing as a free lunch. You have the Isle Hanamine, it's not really a gift. He was getting something back from that gift. What he, he, he got an introduction, he got a, some kind of honor or respect, he got something back from him, some kind of favor. And therefore, even though it was a gift, it's keep say the It's like loss. It's like a per, it's like somebody bought the land, and if he's gonna be seized, it, he's gonna be out of luck. So I'm like Markashisha, Bereder of Christa. So Markashisha, uh, so Markashisha, Bereder of Christa, taught Rav Ashi. Tashma, we're gonna try to answer this question. We have a person who's a Shlivmara. We've had this concept in Mesechas Kitten many times. A Shlivmara is somebody who's very sick. He, he's, he, we, we, are, we are concerned he's going to die. And he says the following. So the Shlimera says, listen, I want you to give 200 Zeus to Pony, uh, 200 Zeus to A, the Gimel Meo Slaponi, and 300 to B, the Dao Meo Slaponi, and 400 to, to C. Give them my money. Now, and then he writes this out in the contract. We don't say, we don't say, well, the guy who was written first in the contract he gets, and then the money doesn't, the estate doesn't have enough money to pay everybody. The estate, let's say, only has 
uh, 150 zuz, and he can't give it all out that money. But we don't say whoever was written first that since A was written first, he gets everything. We don't say whoever was written first gets gets everything. We don't say that. We we say that it's divided equally, and so therefore, and so therefore, for this reason. Lefikach, for this reason, Yatza alav shtarchov go from the corn. So let's say there was a note that was to be collected from this, uh, from the person who died, that he's going to collect for equally from all of, all of those three people, meaning before they pay it out, he, he has to be paid from, that he gets to collect equally from all of them. But, but let's say the person who was very sick and dying, let's say he said, give first 200 zoos to this person. The Akharavaponi, and then give 200, then give whatever to the next person. The Akharavaponi, and then give after him to the next person. Then, since he's saying it like that, like presumably because it's a matana, because it's a gift, then we say, call them the Then we say, whoever got it first, got it. And go from an And then, then if there's a note that comes out on the estate, you collect from the last person first. And in law, if the last person doesn't have, go from the shofan. If you collect from the one before him, and go from the shofan. You collect it from the one before him. Meaning to say, in this case, it's not. It's it's a gift. And even though it was a gift that he was giving it to the parties, we're we're going to say since it was a gift. The uh, person who comes to collect collects from the last party first, and he can't go back and seize from the uh, he can't go back and seize from the class from the first person, even though Afogav the comma Bainonis Ubasu Ziboris Mizigoris Babu Mi Bainonis Ogavi. So even though the last one was the Ziboris and the earlier ones were better properties. Nevertheless, he collects from the Ziboris and not from the Beinunis. So the rabbis say, so we see from here that this Takana that the rabbis made, that if there's free and clear property, you collect from that property first. This was said even when the property that was given away was a gift. We still don't allow you to go into the uh, the, the gift and seize it back if you could collect it from free and clear property. In this case, you collect from the third person to get the gift, and you can't go back to the earlier people, even though the earlier people had better properties. So the Gemara says, no, that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is the exact same case that we start off from, where it wasn't a gift to these people, but it was a sale to these people. Here we're talking about is where the, the person who was dying owed these people the money. And so therefore, he, he, he said, pay back my debts, pay back A, pay back B, pay back C. And therefore, we're not going to let you take the class A property from, from B, we make you take, the, or from A or B, we make you take the Ziboris from, from the third person because of the Takana we learned before that it was the say the Delacucho. So we don't want the purchasers who bought the, bought the property to lose out when there's free and clear property remaining. So the Gemara says, but how can you say it was a note? It was a debt. What to new Kamar? It says, give it to this person. He means to new Bechovi. He says, give it to them as my as my debt. Meaning to say, sometimes says, I'll give you your money. You're not giving him, you owe him the money, but you still say the expression, I'm giving you the money. Gemara says, So why don't we look on the note to see who he had to pay first? And that's how he knows who like see who we owe the money first. And that's who the person gets to collect class from. So the Gemara says, no, the Lake Lashtara. There is no, but there was no contract. Gemara says, well, call it, call them the star comer. It says whoever was written in the note first doesn't get, uh, is the one who's going to uh, get paid first. Gemara says, no, that's the star Pekarita. That was the will. That wasn't the note of where he became indebted. The bias Ema or alternative answer no, even if he gave it as a gift, we're going to say you can't go into the estate and and seize it and seize it if it's a better property. The 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 creditor does not have that right. 
more kasha, but how do we deal with the fact that in this case, we say collected only from the third party and not from the earlier party? Because my govam and achron, what does it mean you collect from the last one? It doesn't mean that you collect first from the last one. It means say, the only one who loses the money is the last one. I mean, to say the creditor could go back to the first person, collect his class A property, and then the class A property person turns around and, and says, well, you're the last one here to the, to the third person. You the, you're the one who was last in line. You get you have to pay. The Bayesemo or alternative answer is the Shavakul Adadi. We're not perhaps the case here that we're dealing with this in Bryson is that all this, the different fields are the same value. Since they're all the same value, he says to collect from the third one, the last, the last uh, person in line, he collects from him first. It says the, the Mishnah said, that if we want to collect from property where there was a lien on it, you can collect property for the consumption of the food. Now, what is the concept here? We had, the way Rashi explained it on the Gemara was the concept here was that if a person stole a field, let's say Reuven stole a field, and then he sold this field to Shimon, and he guaranteed Shimon that if, you, if somehow this field is, uh, has to be returned to its original owner, you could take my other fields. And then, then Shimon has his field and, and the person who was robbed was Levi. Levi says, this is my field. I'm going to come and seize my field from you. And he gets to take the field with all the fruits on it. It's my field. And so now Shimon who bought the field from Reuven goes back and he says, I need my field back. You, you owe me a field. So he's allowed to go back into the properties that Reuven had subsequently sold to pay back him for the money spent on the field. But those fruits that that the person who had initially been robbed had stolen from him, he knows he can only collect from the, that, that Shimon also lost that. Well, that he can only collect from the free and clear property of the person who sold it to him, from the free and clear property of Ruvain, not from the property that Ruvain had sold. What's the reason that we don't, that you don't go into Nechaz and Meshubad and the lean property to get, pay you back for the fruits? Because it's not written in the contract. The contract doesn't talk about the fruits. The contract talks about the property. And the Gemara, and the way Rashi explains it is, even if it would be written, it wouldn't be enough because it's not something that's typically recorded. That you record the contract, the property, but not the fruits. And normally Rabbi Abba will Ula, so Rabbi Abba says to Ula, Vamazon Aisha Vabanos. But what about the fact that we have to support a woman and her daughter is from the Ksuva, the command Ksiva Domu? And the fact that the husband has to support his wife and his daughter is from the from his Ksuba, that is it's like it's written. The Katoni Mutsin, and we still don't go into lean property to collect the support for that. So Mara says, Amale. That was the way it was written down. That that was the way originally the Ksuba was set up, that they're written, that they could be collected only from the free and clear property, but not from the property which has a lien on it. And so that's the first answer that since they weren't written down, it's not, it, there isn't the same type of public awareness about it. And so therefore you could collect the money to pay back the estate or to be responsible for the, the property, but not for the ongoing support. You can't collect that from the free and clear, pro, the, the property that will lean on it. Rabbi Chanina, Amar, no, Rabbi Chanina gives a different answer. Afisha ink suvin. No, he says no. The person, the, the, the support is not a fixed amount. Uh, so the reason, so therefore, the payros, the fruits, the pro product of the land is not fixed. Sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's a little. And so the purchasers have no idea about their expected loss, their possibility for loss. And so therefore, for that reason, we establish that they can't, it can't be the case. So the Gemara says, Mar's going to ask this question. Mar's going to go into this, but we'll stop here. God will pick this up uh, tomorrow. God will. All right.